Hello, everybody. Well, uh, you know, it's great. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing how many people are watching already. And, uh, hey, that must be uh, Pete and Julie watching from Stonehenge, one of my favourite places. And uh, good to know they now know that the, uh, the main stones only came from just down the road a little bit. So, um, new thing to find out. But I saw your post on Facebook today. That's really great. Uh, we should be down that way next week or the week after next. Uh, more about that later because uh, our holiday is coming up and this year we're going to call it the, the Hedge on Holiday. So um, we look forward to that. I am anyway. Because um, we're going to talk about lockdown and all the exciting things that that's brought to us. But I'm going to start you off with one you wouldn't have heard before. Bedlam City There I heard a maid complain She was making sad lamentation She had lost her joy in the I have lost my job. 
you. Now, that song was uh, called Bedlam City, and it was one that uh, when Alice were together, I, well, I didn't write it, I, I wrote the music for it. Um, I found the words and uh, quite, quite liked it. It's uh, one of those terrible, terrible tales. I mean, this, this poor girl, her parents have said that, uh, that she can't get together with the chap that she loves, so she goes off to war and uh, she goes to uh, the asylum at Bedlam. And uh, she's laying there, sort of dying of a broken heart, and, and he's dying of getting shot, basically. And uh, so it, it all ends absolutely tragically, you know, like most of these old folk songs. That's great, isn't it? We love those. Well, I do, anyway. So how have you been this last two weeks? I've been quite busy. Uh, work's been taking me here, there, and everywhere. And uh, since we last got together, uh, I've made a decision. And you know that uh, we've been putting out every week these t-shirts. And, and this week is the last chance that you will get to win one. Because um, if you were watching two weeks ago, your, your name will be in the hat. And we will be drawing the lucky winner shortly. But I've, I've, been dis I've decided to carry on and be generous. I mean, what can I say? And so I've had these printed. Here we go. I watch the hedge at home. So what could be more apt? So these are the latest shirts that we're going to be giving away. So all you have to do is basically watch. Um, we'll see you watching. Uh, I can tell Kat because um, she can only... Have you been, we'll see who's in yet. So uh, we've got Mike Booty, Liz Reed, Sue Tucker, Andy Walker, Connor Dewey, Alison Booty, Andrew Walker, John Parker. There you go, somebody we remember, Jeff. Who's that? Um, Julie Roach, Carol Lee, and Pete Roach, of course, as well. Um, Brenda Reader. Stephanie Richardson, Sue Campbell from Sp another one of my Spanish followers. There we go. Sue Campbell's in Spain and watching. Um, she says she loves the fire, even though it is 38 degrees where she is. Um, Connor says he loves it. John Parker saying rock on. Donna Brett, Donna Brett is saying hi, Robin, as is Kevin Rowan Druitt. So yeah, it's quite a lot of you. 15 already. That's good. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I've been all busy this week, and uh, one of the things I've been doing is making my wands, because we're about to go on holiday, and so hopefully uh, the shop where they're for sale in Cornwall will want to buy some more, although it's pretty doubtful because all the shops have been closed for absolutely ages. So, here they are. This, this, this is some of the, the, the wands that I've made. Uh, I've made... Some in black thorn, well, most of them in black thorn this time, and some in willow. And uh, there's a willow one, and that is a black thorn one, another black thorn, and another willow. So hopefully you can see them, and they all have a little charm at the end, and a, a nice polished stone in the cage, hand wrapped, hand polished, with a crystal tip at the end. And um, they sell in the shop for twenty pounds. <laughs> I'm sorry. At least I've got Jeff here to talk to. I Jeff is so expensive. I'll take two. <laughs> well, they're, they're sold. <laughs> sold to the to the man with lots of pictures to sell later. So. Um, you know, but I mean, if you do want one, give us a shout and uh, maybe we can do them for a tenner. They do take quite a while to make. So we'll do another song, shall we? Uh, yeah, we'll have... Um, we'll use Bernard for this one. As you know, my guitars do have names. We got I've got one on the wall which you can't see, and that's called Tim. Um, because it's a Turner. And the first original working name of Fairport Convention 
was actually Tim Turner's narration. So I've got a guitar called Tim Turner. <laughs> <coughs> This one's Bernard because uh, basically I bought it with the money I got from when my dad died. song called uh, The Tours, which I believe was on a Supertramp album. Talking of Super... Hmm, an idea. Oh, blimey, time goes quickly. We've only had two songs. And um, we've got a guest tonight. Not only have we got a guest tonight, we have a guest video. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong camera. Um, so we've got a guest video tonight as well. And uh, the guest video is been put or has been put together by Richard Digence, and it's uh, something that he decided to do during lockdown. And this is why I was talking earlier about what did you do during lockdown? Uh, because one of the things I did was I got involved in helping Richard Digence make this video. So you will see yours truly appearing in in. Uh, in this video um, saying something very very silly that I a line that I was given to say and uh, lots of other people and there are quite a few famous faces in there you might find a, a famous footballer some members of Fairport Convention and uh, various other uh, fiddle players and um, well-known people so keep a look out for that that will be along in about uh, oh 10 minutes or 10 15 minutes or so uh, I'm gonna do another song now and then uh, I think after that, I'm, just, I'm thinking on my feet here. After that, I think we're going to have to do the t-shirt competition. It's all happening so fast and I'm, I'm going to have a swig of tea because I, I think we, we need a cup of tea. 
tired of the sorry, I <coughs> went a bit piratey then, didn't mm. it? So we're going to do some summary, I think. So we need a capo. I did this one the other week, but being as the weather's been so gorgeous the last couple of days, a bit hot yesterday, I must admit. Even for me. Well, especially for me. quite a tongue twister actually you may have noticed and uh, luckily I've got my own teeth in today so that always helps I've had quite a few problems during lockdown with my it's not a joke I really have had some problems during lockdown with my teeth um, like a lot of people and it's not fun is it but hopefully we'll get some dentists open soon and they can get some things sorted out for us so I think it must be t-shirt time. 
So uh, what we're doing is, um... oh, cat, the sound needs turning up apparently. Kevin, she says she's done it. Great, isn't it? We've got a sound technician in Blackpool of all places. And we've got a fire critic in Spain. So, you know, where are my other Spanish listeners, watchers today? I've usually got, usually got a crowd of people in Spain watching. Rachel Booty and Co. Come on. Now, I know Rachel Booty, the reason I mention her, apparently her dad tells me she is desperate to win one of these T-shirts. So, you are in the draw, Rachel. Let's just uh, hope that your name gets picked out, shall we? You know what we haven't had today? We haven't had the hand of mystery coming from the side. So, we're going to get the hand of mystery to come in from the side and pick a name out of the box of dreams. And she's picked a name. She's unfolded the name even without even looking. How about that? Oh, it's Bob Yankowski! All the way down in... Um, where does he live? Surrey, isn't it? Well, somewhere foreign anyway. Foreign for us Norfolk people. So, Bob, you are the last winner of the sod COVID-19 I Survive Rob Duick's Online Gigs shirt. And um, the next T-shirt up for grabs will be one of these, which is more, you know, a bit, bit more boring, but a bit more truthful. Well, we're trying to get the advertising in now, you know. So, Bob, that will be on its way to you sometime this week, mate, when I can be asked to go to the post office. So, uh, who's saying what on here? Uh, Rob Jewett, message from Cat. I'm having no bowel issues. Loading the screen. Oh, I did that. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Connor, damn, I have to go, Rob. I'm off out with my friends to watch the stream on repeat if I can. Thanks again and can't wait to watch the rest. Yes, you can watch the rest, Connor. You can watch it either on YouTube as from, I think, uh, nine, 8 or 9 o'clock tomorrow, or you can watch later on on Facebook. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to do a song. Ow! Normally hit a guitar once a week. So we're going to do a song now, and then, then we're going to have a our video and then we're going to bring on our special sorry I'm looking at the wrong camera again I'm not very good at this you may have noticed uh, so I'm going to do a song then we're going to have uh, a, uh, a video and then we're going to have our special guest Jeff Ward and the song I'm going to do for you if I get the peg off it's an old Talis number. Hey! Carol will be uh, squirming right now. And uh, it's quite strange because when I do these old Talis numbers, a lot of them Carol used to sing. And uh, so the keys are worked. So I, I do have to change them around a bit and make things a bit different. But I really don't think. Carol will be expecting me to sing this one. There's an old legend in the north and the west, the uh, northern and western isles of Scotland, about the Selkie. And the Selkie was uh, thought to be a mythical creature who would come out of the water and shed its skin. And uh, when it had shed its skin, it became human, and usually a beautiful woman. And men would sometimes take the skin and hide the skin, and the Selkie would be uh, enraptured by them and, and end up marrying them. Maybe they would have children and all that. But if the Selkie ever found their skin, they would 
put their skin back on and return back to the sea. Across the sea. No, no, that's wrong, isn't it? Across the night, the wailing sea. The sulky woman comes to me. Comes crying, moaning with the wind. Black hair flickers, shadows play across my window in the day. Below the rocks, crashing waves, where she beguiles and holds my gaze. But now you're not all you seem. Your cloak falls as you left your skin. And on the shoreline, the ebb and flow. A tide's gone crazy, falling low. Dark shapes are calling back your name. Restless while they lure you soon. Dark shapes call you to their fold. The seals gather and bid your soul. And in the morning, in a dream, a memory stirs of skin that gleams, and that wet footprint in the sand, and sodded tears of those that are down. To that place, transcending the free time and space, the selfie showed them where to go. You can take a fruity on the toe. There we go, a song all about the Selkie. <clears throat> and that was written by uh, the first fiddle player we had in uh, Tallis, uh, Sarah Jane.
um, who moves up north somewhere. I don't know where she is now. She may still be there, who knows. Um, anyway, God love you, Sarah. That, that was uh, a lovely person having the band and uh, a lovely song. Now, here we go. I've been in touch this week with uh, a friend of ours, uh, Richard Digents, and he's given us permission to show the video which he produced during lockdown. Now, as I said, there's all sorts of people on this, um, so see how many people you can spot and know. Uh, there'll be uh, at least a famous footballer and uh, various other musicians and uh, and lots of us people that aren't at all famous as well. So here we go. Um, this is uh, 200 Remembers. Hello to all of my two-legged friends. A sweet Alfie here. Although some of you probably would have seen me on the BBC News at 6 o'clock. Well, wait till I tell you. I know some very, very strange people. Who want to let you know about what they remember about life before the lockdown? There were fruit salads, blackjacks, marshmallow shrimps. Jubblies, bazookas, spangles and imps. The kid in the classroom who spoke with a lisp. Boxes of rocks on November the 5th. The Saturday classified pink with the scores. Knocked down ginger banging on doors. Does anyone remember love hearts? Tortoises sweeping in cupboards for months. Catching the chicken pox, measles and mumps. Dennis the menace and Corky the cat. Desperate Dan in his ten gallon hat. Pineapple chunks. And strawberry pips. Kissing a girl who you love on the lips. Bottles of Tiger, all taking sips. And washing up bowls full of tadpoles. Danger Man was terribly hip. Like 77 Sunset Strip. No hiding place, Dixon too. Captain Pugwash and Mr Magoo. Remember how his sight was short. Here's an insignificant thought. How come the fugitive never got caught? After all those years on the run. So that the barber could cut your hair. You sat on the plank on the arms of a chair. The barber said to the grown-up man. Is there something you need for the coming weekend? A pack is a three, they usually said. Which went completely over my head. Until I got Jennifer Lawson in bed, and I could have done with one then. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven potato, more. Palm toffee, Scooby-Doo's. Reginald Bosomkip, reading the news. The animal faces the rising sun. Five minutes single at number one. What did you do with your dinky toys? Palmer violets and jamboree bags. Found a bike shed puffing up bags. Flashy cars like E-type jacks. So we only had a Cortina. Down to the Army and Navy store. The things that were worn in the Second World War. Duffel bags and duffel coats. Idiot mittens with string round our throats. Bachelor's senior service and weights. Sooty and sweet. Beyond our ken. The Michelin Man, Bill and Ben. Do you remember conkers when you made them hard in the oven? Flying saucers and licorice wood. William Tell and Robin Hood. The Dandy, the Beano, the Beezer as well. Bing Crosby, Greg Rowe and Shell. Being scared of catching the pox. Quizzles with fleshes and cola cubes. Girls in class developing boobs. Remember when zoobs were good for your tubes? And making masks for the smog. Colonel Mustard, the Reverend Green. And what ever happened to Hope and Keen? 
Double your money with Monica Rose. The very first record in status quo. These are the things that we recall, the things we remember from when we were small. You can think of your own ones as well, but most importantly, keep safe, keep well. Well, thanks very, very much for watching. And if you'd like to help all my wee doggy friends, please click on the button to donate. So, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Richard Digent and friends performing 200 Remembers, one of uh, Richard's uh, well-known songs. Um, if you can, if you want to, please subscribe. You, the little thing came up. It will come up again at the end. Uh, www.folksathome.co.uk And there you can subscribe to an online folk festival. There's shops, there's... Uh, uh, workshops, uh, lots of acts, Steel Ice Band, Feast of Fiddles, uh, one of my favourites, uh, the Pierce Brothers, um, all sorts of people. It's great fun. Um, so have a look, check that out, and uh, have fun. Anyway, we're going to have some fun now, because uh, back in the uh, days of Meat in the Hedge, up in the Feathers, uh, this chap used to appear quite regularly. His name is Jeff Ward. Hello Jeff, he is here now, live, in our sitting room, um, joining us as our extra household in, and along with our social bubble. So please would you welcome for the next 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes maybe, I can't remember, uh, Jeff Wald. Thanks Rob, thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm not as loud as Rob by any standards, so I'm in cat's hands. You are the cat. Um, and I'm going to start with something which is quite soft. And I will give an extra point for anyone who can tell me who wrote this. You'll know it. A bag. Well, that was written by the Sherman Brothers, obviously, uh, of Walt Disney. They were an employee of Walt Disney all those years ago when he made the uh, Mary Poppins. So, uh, yes, here's, uh, here's one you'll all know. Sing along.
And if I never lose my eyes, if my colors all run dry, yes, if I never lose my eyes, well, baby, I won't have to cry no more. Sapping from the back moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. I won't moan and I won't beg. Yes, if I ever lose my legs, oh hey, 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 I won't have to work no more. And if I ever lose my mouth, or my teeth, in north and south, if I ever lose my mouth, oh hey, 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 I won't have to talk.
Do numbers there from Cat Stevens. Getting a lot of likes for those Cat Stevens numbers. Elias Yusuf. A uh, favourite man of mine in many, many ways. And um, he also is a great artist. I don't know if any of you know this, but uh, if you remember the T for the Teleman and um, the album's Catch Bullet. No, I uh, can't think of the one with a teapot, Rob. What was that one? Teapot, no. I think it was T for the Teleman, wasn't it? He painted the, uh, the record covers, the album covers back in those days, if you remember 33 and a third finals. He's a great guy. Talking of art, um, I don't know if any of if you know this, but I paint a lot, and um, I've been involved in art for most of my life now. And uh, there's a magazine called Wyndham Online, I think it's called, the Wyndham Magazine. If you just go on the computer, put in Wyndham Magazine, it'll come up. And um, I think you have to open it in Adobe or whatever it is. And uh, if you were to scroll down five or six pages, you'll find an article in there about me and my paintings and my art. So please take a look. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, here's the one which you'll all know. There's uh, four guys from Liverpool who made it pretty big. And um, one of the guys named George Harrison, you may have heard of him. He wrote, to my mind, he wrote some of the best songs the Beatles ever did. Here's one of his now. And because we got the fire on, ooh, I'm going to sing this. George, wherever you are. Okay. Um, I'm going to do one of my own numbers now. It's a very soft number and um, it's called Without Pain. It goes through three stages of life young child, 18 age, then old, and then the inevitable. 
So it's called Without Pain, and here it is. Um, a guy back in the 70s I had a friend I had a friend who worked in professional recording studios and um, way back in the 70s he bought a house I mean he bought a house it was about six thousand pounds well I went around to visit him to see this house and it was a small little terraced house and he had a small front room and in this room there in each corner were these ginormous professional speakers and you can dwarf the whole room. To add to that, on the top inside of each speaker, he fixed these great big horns that took a top end of the sound. And massive, and I thought the neighbours, man. Anyway, he said to me, Jeff, 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 sit down and listen to this. And he put a vinyl album on. And I listened to it. And everything was brilliant. And I said, who is that guy? 
He said, that's a chap called Mike Batts. I said, Mike Batts? Who the hell is Mike Mike Batt went on to become famous, and um, fortunately he had to gain a name by doing those awful Wumble songs back in the 70s. But it made him some money, it made him famous, and he went on to be a leading force in popular music. And nowadays he promotes some newer, up and coming face. He, he, I think he discovered Katie Mello, one of those. Um, anyway, one of those songs on that album. Was one of my all-time favorites and for many years i've always thought i want to play that i want to play that. but just recently actually i saw rog play this and it jogged my memory i thought oh, i've got to play that i've got to learn it it's called the railway hotel beautiful lovely song about the first night a young man ever spends with his young and he wants to take her to the savoy He's got no money, so all he could afford was a railway hotel. He went to the room and we bought him the door. The bass from the jukebox was coming through the floor. We could still hear the roar of the train. Was this all the comfort we got for our sins? No candles, no waiters, no soft violins. A dirty electric conveyor plugged into the mains. This is, this is Rob talking from, <laughs> from behind the camera. Do you remember uh, when I sang that at the meeting the head and you, you then asked for a copy of the lyrics and all that, and then we actually worked out a version between us where Indeed. I played the whistle. I don't remember you playing the whistle. And I came across that the other week because oh, really? I played that a, few, <laughs> a, a couple of meet, a couple of edges ago, and I actually came across that bit where we have done the arrangement. That was a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, that's a, a lovely song, I think, is a lovely song by the wonderful Mike Bats. I don't know where he is now. But Very um, nice, says John Parker. John Parker. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Um, I was brought up, I was born in uh, Berkshire, and I was brought up around the uh, Berkshire Oxfordshire borders, and I um, went to see Don McLean 
in Oxford many many years ago he just made that album um, American Pie and uh, I was spellbound by the one man performance in a Wapping Global Theatre he was superb and there was a song on an album of his so long ago that I again I just had to learn this called Empty Chairs it's a really sad song but I just love this um, I don't know if he wrote it doesn't sound his style, it sounds more like a Willie Nelson style, but I just don't know. But I want to give you my take on the song Empty Chairs. <laughs> And morning goes with no regrets. Though the evening brings a memories I can't forget. Empty rooms that echo as I climb the stairs. And empty clothes that drape and fall on empty chairs. And I wonder if you know.
empty chairs. Okay, what have we done here? We've done a few demos, and we should do even more demos. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do another little instrumental, which is one of my own concoctions. Um, I never actually gave this a title, so I'm going to call it Untitled. Because it is. Untitled. How are we doing, Rob? About there. Yeah? Finished? Yeah. Or do you want to yeah, know? really. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, for everybody, for listening. As I say, do take a look at my article and my paintings, and uh, I'll say good night. Thank you. Over to you, Rob. It won't be quite good night, because if you just... Sorry, we had to we had to do a quick sort of swap over, and um, I was just explaining to Jeff that we got we got Apple um, disinfectant today. So um, anyway, we're sort of at the end of the show, and I think it's really been a another great one. I've enjoyed myself, and it was lovely hearing Jeff play again. And uh, I can see by the reaction we've been getting that you've been enjoying it as well. And so it's like time to end now. A little update on what's happening in two weeks' time. Now, in two weeks' time, it does say in Wyndham Online magazine <laughs> that we'll be having the Hedge on holiday. 
Unfortunately, I made a bit of an error in my calculations, and uh, Kat and I will actually be in Oxfordshire, and it would have been the Fairport Crop Relief Festival. But um, obviously, it's not happening. However, there's quite a lot going to be happening online on the Fairport Convention YouTube channel. They're going to be showing uh, Richard Thompson's entire set, uh, Fairport's entire set. Uh, there's going to be uh, a bit of a Morris dance with um, Richard Dyer. There's all, all sorts of blooming stuff going on. So we'll be watching from a field actually in Oxfordshire. Uh, so we'll almost be there. Um, so we won't be broadcasting on the Saturday. However, hopefully we will be broadcasting and it will be on either the Tuesday or the Wednesday following that. Um, and I can't remember what the date's going to be, Cat. 15, 16, 17. So it'll be either the 18th or 19th. Keep an eye out on the Facebook page and we will tell you when it is. We're going to do a shorter show but it will be called The Hedge on Holiday. And we are hoping that we're going to be able to broadcast it live from the clifftop at Ladies Window in North Cornwall. So it's pretty ambitious and we've got to rely on a good 4G signal. So, you know, everything crossed, folks. And the weather. We're at the mercy of the weather. Yeah, we're at the mercy of the weather. Failing that, we will hopefully get into our friend's house and uh, be able to broadcast from there. But we really want to do an outside broadcast. And uh, looking forward to it, actually. So don't forget, it won't be two weeks on Saturday. It'll be two weeks and uh, two or three days. So keep an eye out. I'll try and advertise it, but obviously we're going to be sort of with a lot of the time in the middle of nowhere and uh, trying to get this across. So, time to finish. Am I playing with this one? Yeah. I don't know it. <laughs> You'll pick it up as we go along. Okay. It's the one we practiced before, man. Shh. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was meant to... I was meant to make out that you were really clever then, wasn't I? <laughs> I'm doing well, folks, doing well. So we're going to say goodnight. Uh, we're going to do this, and then I'll, I'll just say my usual goodbyes after this. And uh, at the very end, uh, we'll put up the address for the folks at home. So if you would like to uh, go along to uh, thefolksathome.co.uk, you'll be able to subscribe and have your own very own festival and it is a good one actually I've watched a lot of the stuff already so we're going to say goodnight with this song it's called May Morning you may remember it from every other week that we've done the hedge at home and it goes like this two three four Thanks. <laughs> 
the vanish from where I stand. All the chances wasted a drawing of steer. And all around there's a new life rising from the winds of the There's always one, and Jeff really is the one. <laughs> anyway, it's been great having you all along. I uh, really enjoyed tonight yet again. We will be back, as I say, in just over two weeks' time, and then hopefully in four weeks' time we'll be back in this studio, studio, <laughs> living room, with another special guest. Can't tell you who it is yet, but I've got somebody in mind. So see you all in just over two weeks' time. May your gods go with you. Don't forget, folks at home, bye.